Hey Galaxies, it's Tia and I'm back at you with a brand new video. If you're new here, hey, I'm a big fan of all things cozy, especially cafes. They're a place that I can always turn to to find inspiration and creativity, especially when I am in a creative rut. My favorite thing about exploring different cafes in Toronto is trying the matcha. In this video, you're gonna see my favorite cafes in Toronto. Number one, Canafora. My favorite cafe in Toronto is Canafora. It's my go-to place to write, work on YouTube videos, and catch up with people I haven't seen in a long time. Let's break it down. The interior. I rate it a solid five out of five. Canafora is super comfy with the option to sit on cushion chairs instead of wooden chairs. Number two, Wi-Fi. They give you free Wi-Fi for three hours with a purchase. This is enough time to get a good amount of work done on the internet. Next, the ambience. Lately, this cafe has become a lot more popular, but during the weekdays, it's pretty quiet. I usually tune out to music, but when I'm not, I enjoy the ambience of the cafe. From the sounds of people talking in their own languages, to the whirring of the coffee machines, to the clanking of dishes being returned, all these sounds inspire me to be productive. And I can get a lot of planning done here. And finally, Finally, the matcha. I have something to confess. I really like sweet matcha. <laughs> this matcha is like tasting matcha cake in like a cup. My order at most cafes is a green tea latte with almond milk or a matcha latte with almond milk. I've convinced so many of my friends to try this cafe for their matcha latte and each one has agreed that the matcha is A+. Plus. That is really good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Number two. Russell and Still, oh my globe. This is me as a human being being represented in the form of a cafe. I could live here. I recently discovered this cafe and ventured here with my sister Tasha. And honestly, I'm super eager to return to this Vietnamese spot as the aesthetic of the place is beautiful and it makes me wanna edit videos, write blog posts, code and design graphics all day long here. <laughs> Basically get my creativity on. The interior. I rate it a 4.5 out of 5. The interior of this cafe is gorgeous. The most gorgeous on this list, that's for sure. The use of wooden accents and the plethora of plants scattered across the cafe is pleasing to the eyes. It lost half a point because it's a little bit small with limited seating. And unfortunately, the seating is not as comfortable as the cushion seats at Canafora. Wi-Fi! They give you free Wi-Fi, of course. Except for one day of the week, I think. I'm not sure which day it is, but they do put a posting in the cafe to let you know which day it is. The ambience. Since it's a small cafe, you're definitely nearby other people, and it's a really popular cafe too. And therefore, you can overhear conversations quite easily. So when I go to this cafe alone, I will be bringing my earphones with me so I can focus. <laughs> However, since Tasha and I were just chatting and catching up, we could still hear each other. <laughs> All right, matcha. Okay, honestly, this is a new thing for me, but I think this matcha is my favorite matcha on this list out of all the cafes. I've only had it once, but the presentation of the matcha and the way it's sweetened is quite unique. They call this the matcha pandan latte. Pandan is a tropical plant that is often used in South Asian and Southeast Asian cooking. It was really interesting to try matcha flavored with this plant, and Tasha and I both really enjoyed it. All right, food. This cafe offers a small assortment of baked goods with coffee shop staples like croissants and cookies. All right, my third favorite cafe is Himalayan Coffee House because I love their coffee art. It's rare to find coffee art this good in Toronto, but this cafe has definitely mastered it. You can't request coffee art, but these lovely baristas still gave me Totoro art. Guys, look, they made a Totoro matcha latte. I am so happy. I love this place. That made me extremely happy because I'm a huge Miyazaki fan. Interior. For me, this cafe is definitely the perfect writing and studying spot. It's darkly lit with a few options to sit on cushioned seat. Also, there's a huge table, which is great if you have a study group. I sat there with my friend Kim, who is an awesome YouTuber based in Toronto and South Korea. Y'all should check her out for South Korea vlogs and tips. All right, the menu. Unfortunately, their latte art is not able to be made, 
with dairy free alternatives. So I sacrificed and allowed myself to have regular milk in order to experience the latte art for the first time. Matcha! I ordered a matcha latte with Totoro art, and my friend ordered a coffee latte with Hello Kitty art. So cute. We definitely did like a bunch of flat lay photos. Check out my blog post in the description to see all the photos we took. The matcha was really good. Since I go to this cafe for their coffee art mostly, I wouldn't say their matcha is ideal for me since I prefer dairy-free milk, but it's really good if you're okay with dairy. Next on my list is Cafe Ken Ken. So first of all, the cafe is pink. Like pink walls, pink throw blankets. It's just very pink. This place is an Instagrammer's dream spot for flat lay photos. I totally took a billion photos. This brunch spot is a bit pricey, but I guess normal for brunch food. I don't brunch that often, but since I was meeting fellow YouTubers in the city, we met for brunch. I ordered pancakes and the other girls ordered the other menu items. Let me just say these were the fluffiest pancakes I've ever bitten into yet. Overall, Cafe Ken Ken is a wonderful place if you'd like to catch up with friends, family members, or connect with new people in the city. If you're a blogger, I definitely recommend hitting this place up. Oh, if you go to University of Toronto, like y'all are like two minutes away from this spot, so you know. Okay, next is page one. Looking for a place to study? Page One Cafe is another favorite spot because it's right beside Ryerson University and it has comfy, cushioned seating. <laughs> Yay! I love that the place has typewriters all around and that it's cozy and dimly lit. The matcha is not my favorite. I had it with oat milk and it's not as flavorful as the other spots that I enjoy matcha at. However, it's definitely a great place to get your head down on a school or writing project. My vlog camera died. So next on my list is a place called Hale Coffee House. This cafe is plastered in art paintings and has stunning architecture inside. Look at the ceiling, incredible. Also, they roast their own coffee beans if you're a big coffee fan. Apparently there are cafes in Toronto that use coffee beans from Hill Coffee. I don't know though. For me, Hill Coffee just fills me with nostalgia. It's very memorable to me for some reason. I think it's because it's the first cafe I went to alone and it kind of started this whole cafe hobby for me. <laughs> Since this cafe is so big, it does feel a little less cozy. However, the matcha does make up for it. Unlike the other cafes, this matcha is quite bitter, yet it still tastes so good. When I'm not writing here, I'm editing or having deep chats with friends. All right, next on the list is Incha Boba Cafe. Incha Boba Cafe is another cute spot, but instead of matcha, they serve boba, aka bubble tea. I've only been here once, but what attracted me to this cafe was, of course, the interior. There are marble tables, there is gold lettering, there are some plants scattered, like just the combination feels like a really fancy kitchen on Pinterest. Although I didn't sit at one of the marble tables because it wasn't available because there are tons of students there studying, if I did, I would have taken a bazillion flat lay photos of said bubble tea on the marble. But instead, my friend and I sat at one of the really large tables and we both got a lot of work done that day. I was sorting through Amber Lou concert footage, aka that video has should have been up on my vlog channel by the time you see this, so you should totally check it out. And she was studying something for philosophy, you know. We ordered a jasmine milk tea, which was my first time trying jasmine milk tea. To be honest, it tasted really bitter. It's okay. Oh no! It's, it's a little bitter. Oh no. So I was not a big fan of that specific bubble tea. The next time I'm gonna try the classic bubble tea or another boba drink. But yeah, it was a bit difficult to get through the jasmine drink. I still like the aesthetic of the place though, so that's kind of why it's still on the list, you know what I'm saying? Finally, Baddie's Cafe. This is at the last of my list, only because it was a super duper, duper tiny coffee shop with no Wi-Fi. Now this can be great if you're having deep and meaningful conversations, which is exactly what Liz and I did for a couple hours, but to get work done for a prolonged period of time, 
not so much. The matcha was good, but nothing special. According to my friend Liz, the breakfast oatmeal was really good. The coolest thing about this cafe is their famous Instagram worthy wall. My friend and I definitely had a mini photo shoot before leaving the cafe, which is, you know, another reason to visit a cafe. Find a cute wall and just have a photo shoot there. It's actually a very cute cafe. It's, it's, it's a vibe. It's like, you know, white and black. And um, it's very quaint. This isn't just like regular degula like Tim Hortons or whatever. The, yeah, no, you know, regular degula Tim Hortons. Support that. your local coffee shops, okay? They need to thrive. They need to survive. They need to make that queen. <laughs> <laughs> that queen honey. <laughs> Finally, the honorable mentions are, of course, Starbucks and a bubbles tea spot that I want to try out called Bake Island, which is a bakery slash a boba spot combined. Starbucks is pretty much everywhere in Toronto. <laughs> My go-to Starbucks order is either a green tea latte with almond milk or a chai tea latte with almond milk. And I wanna check out Bake Island because apparently they offer alternative milk options in their bubble tea, which is like revolutionary for me. As you can see, I really love cafes and they allow me to be super productive. Whether I'm planning at Canafora, vlogging at Russell and Still, enjoying latte art at Himalayan Coffee House, brunching with YouTubers at Cafe Can Can, writing at Page One, studying at Incha Boba, or having a meaningful chat at Baddies, it's always a home away from home to be productive. I hope this video inspires you to explore and support the local cafes in your city. Let me know in the comments what your favorite coffee spot is and what your go-to order is. Yes, I'd love to know. Also, I'm gonna start featuring my favorite comments at the end of my videos. So make sure to leave one to be a featured galaxy of the video. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe to become a galaxy, and hit the post notification bell to be a super galaxy. And I'll see you next time. Bye.